Have you ever stopped to think how unlikely it is that we're here, alive, right now? Life on Earth didn't happen by chance. It depended on an incredibly rare combination of cosmic, environmental, and even galactic factors. Every tiny condition had to be perfectly tuned, from the position of our planet relative to the Sun to where the Sun itself is located within the galaxy. And the more scientists study this, the more it becomes clear that Earth might not be just another planet in the universe. Maybe it's an exception, a cosmic gem that, by sheer luck or destiny, depending on your point of view, formed in the right place at the right time. This kind of reflection gave rise to a theory called the Rare Earth Hypothesis, which suggests exactly that. The idea that complex life, like the one we know here, might be extremely uncommon throughout the cosmos. Not because the universe is small, quite the opposite, it's unimaginably vast, but because the exact conditions that allowed life to emerge here are incredibly difficult to occur all at once in other places. That's why many astronomers and astrobiologists are in a real race to find another planet that could support life. A new home, an Earth twin. One of the most powerful tools in this search is the James Webb Space Telescope, launched to explore the depths of the universe and identify planets that not only resemble Earth in size but are also located within what's known as the habitable zone. This zone is the region around a star where temperatures are just right for liquid water to exist. And that's crucial, since all life we know depends on it. The size of the habitable zone varies depending on the type of star. Very hot stars have more distant zones, while cooler ones have their habitable regions much closer in. In our solar system, the Sun offers a habitable zone that stretches from about 0.75 to 1.5 astronomical units. And Earth, amazingly enough, is almost exactly in the middle of this Goldilocks belt, orbiting at the perfect distance. One astronomical unit, or about 150 million kilometers. That alone would be lucky enough, right? But it goes even deeper. Because being in the ideal spot relative to the Sun isn't everything. There's something bigger, more complex, that's rarely discussed the position of our system within the galaxy itself. Yes, there's also a galactic habitable zone, a region in the Milky Way where conditions are more favorable for the formation and sustainability of life. And guess what? The sun is also right there, in the perfect spot. This coincidence raises a fascinating question. Could the sun's position in the galaxy have been decisive in allowing life to thrive here? And even more, could the massive black hole at the center of the Milky Way the feared Sagittarius a star, have something to do with all of this? The answer might surprise you. Because while the term black hole usually brings up images of danger and destruction, it may have actually played a crucial role in the architecture of the galaxy, and indirectly in our very existence. But before we get to that point, we need to understand how our seemingly isolated sun is actually part of an incredibly complex galactic structure filled with dangers and dead zones but also with opportunities like the one we found. When we look up at the starry sky, we're only seeing a tiny fraction of our galaxy, the Milky Way, a vast cosmic ocean that holds around 200 billion stars. But not all of these stars are in safe or life-friendly regions. In fact, much of the galaxy is extremely hostile. If the sun were much closer to the galactic core, for instance, we probably wouldn't be here. And there are several reasons why. First, the center of the galaxy is a chaotic, dangerous place where extreme events are common. There, the density of stars is so high that collisions and radiation bursts happen much more frequently. Imagine living in a neighborhood where every neighbor is constantly setting off fireworks. Except in this case, the fireworks are stellar explosions, supernovas, and gamma ray bursts capable of wiping out any form of life on nearby planets. On top of that, the gravitational field near the galactic center is far more unstable, making it difficult even to maintain a stable orbit around a star. Now, if we went to the opposite extreme, the outer edges of the galaxy, we'd face another set of problems. In these faraway regions, the density of heavy elements is much lower. And those elements, like carbon, oxygen, and iron, are essential for forming rocky planets and, of course, for building life as we know it. It would be like trying to build a house in a desert without bricks or cement. That's why the ideal location would be somewhere between those two extremes, far enough from the center to avoid chaos, but close enough to have access to the right materials. And that's exactly where our sun is. Our solar system is located about 27,000 light years from the center of the Milky Way, in a relatively calm region of one of the galaxy's spiral arms. It's like living in a quiet neighborhood of a bustling city, with good resources and far from the chaos of downtown. 
and this privileged position may have been crucial for providing the long-term stability needed. Stability that allowed life to emerge, evolve, and endure over billions of years. It's almost like we're living in the galaxy's cosmic safety zone. This region where the sun resides is informally known as the galactic habitable zone, a concept that's still evolving but has been gaining traction among astronomers. The idea is that, just like there's an ideal distance from a star to allow liquid water, there's also a galactic strip where conditions are more favorable for life. And in that context, our location is nothing short of spectacular. Of course, this doesn't mean that life can only exist in this strip. But outside of it, the risks are far greater and the odds of success much lower. In practice, it's like planting a flower. It might still grow in poor soil or hostile weather, but it'll need a lot more luck and probably won't last very long. In a balanced environment with light, nutrients, and stability, the chances improve drastically. And it's precisely this kind of stability that our little corner of the galaxy provides. And going back to the earlier question, about the giant black hole at the center of the Milky Way, yes, it does play an important role in this story. Not directly in life on Earth, of course, but in the structure of the galaxy as a whole. Sagittarius, a star, with a mass equal to millions of suns, acts as a gravitational anchor, holding the galaxy together. Without it, the Milky Way might not even exist in its current form. It's the central point around which everything spins, including our sun. Speaking of that rotation, it takes about 230 million years for our solar system to make a full orbit around the galactic center. In other words, since the first dinosaurs appeared, our solar system hasn't even completed a single lap around the galaxy. This gives us a sense of how vast the universe is and how small we really are in this gigantic structure, but also how incredibly lucky we've been to be born right here. Now that we better understand why our location in the galaxy is so strategic, it's worth reflecting on another key factor, time. Because it wasn't enough for our solar system to be in the right place, it also had to appear at the right time in cosmic history. When the universe was young, for example, there simply weren't enough heavy elements to form rocky planets like Earth. The first stars only produced hydrogen and helium, and it took entire generations of stars living, dying, and exploding as supernovas to spread heavier atoms throughout space. In other words, the ingredients for life had to be slowly forged in the hearts of ancient stars. Only after this long process, yin which took billions of years, did the universe start to offer the right conditions for planets with life potential to emerge. And our sun appeared at the perfect moment, not too early, when there still wasn't enough material, and not too late, when the more dangerous regions of the galaxy were already formed and active. This gave the solar system a rare balance, in both composition and cosmic neighborhood. In fact, it's this environmental stability that makes our story even more astonishing. Earth had billions of years to develop without being interrupted by galactic catastrophes, like nearby explosions, collisions with other stars, or sudden changes in radiation. That time was essential for simple molecules to evolve into complex life forms and later into conscious beings like us. If any of those steps had been rushed or interrupted, we likely wouldn't be here today. And if you really think about it, this rare combination of factors is what makes the search for life beyond Earth so difficult. Because even though there are billions of planets in the Milky Way, how many of them are not only in their star's habitable zone but also in the galaxy's habitable zone? With the right elements, a stable neighborhood, and enough time for life to evolve? The answer so far is, we don't know. Of course, astronomers continue to scan the universe in search of these candidates. Thousands of exoplanets have already been identified, many of them located in the habitable zones of their stars. But one crucial step remains, analyzing their atmospheres. We need to know whether they have oxygen, methane, carbon dioxide, gases that, here on Earth, are directly linked to the presence of life. And that's no easy task, even with advanced tools like the James Webb Telescope. Despite all these challenges, each new discovery brings us closer to a bigger answer. Maybe one day we'll find an Earth 2.0, or even signs of life on worlds completely different from our own. But until then, all signs point to the fact that we are, at least for now, a cosmic exception, an unlikely success story in a universe full of possibilities. And that leads us to one final and powerful reflection. Knowing that our existence depended on a series of unlikely alignments, from Earth's distance to the Sun to the precise position of our solar system in the galaxy, is almost like finding out we won the cosmic lottery. And that can completely change the way we see the universe, and ourselves. Earth isn't just a little blue dot floating in space. It's the result of billions of years of precise processes, 
stellar interactions, and geographic and galactic conditions that remained stable long enough for life not just to appear, but to evolve. Thinking about that puts everything in perspective. Every tree, every river, every human being is part of a process that began long before Earth itself was formed. We are literally connected to the stars. The atoms that make up our bodies were forged in stars that exploded billions of years ago. And the place where all of this could happen is a calm, well-located corner of a giant galaxy, which in turn spins around a colossal black hole at the center of the Milky Way. It's a chain of events so delicate it borders on poetry. And maybe that's exactly why we haven't found life elsewhere. Because the set of required conditions is incredibly specific. That doesn't mean we're alone. The universe is far too vast to say that with certainty. But maybe we are among the lucky few living in a rare combination of space, time, and matter. And that, in itself, should be enough to make us look up at the sky with more respect, and at Earth with more care. While telescopes and probes continue to explore the farthest reaches of the universe, trying to uncover the mysteries of life beyond Earth, we still have much to learn about the luck, or destiny, that brought us here. And who knows? The more we learn about life's origins, the more we may appreciate the privilege of being part of it. So, next time you look at the sky, remember, you're standing on a perfectly positioned planet, orbiting a stable star, inside a safe zone of a spectacular spiral galaxy. You are the result of billions of years of cosmic balance. And that is, without a doubt, one of the most incredible stories the universe has ever told. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, and share it. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.